three, two, one, go! Welcome to Jason Bowman Loves Cars. I am Jason Bowman and I love cars. Today I'm going to tell you my story of the Porsche 928. I was born in 1974. As a child I had a Radio Shack radio controlled Porsche 928. A few slot car Porsche 928s and numerous Hot Wheels Porsche 928s. Like most kids, I had no idea what a Porsche 928 was really about and had a poster of a Lamborghini Countach on my wall. I used to buy road and track magazines which would pit the Ferraris against the Lamborghinis in top speed challenges. One of my all time favorite pastimes was to play test drive on my PC and terrorize the fictional mountain passes in my Porsche 959 and Ferrari F40. Growing up in a middle-class neighborhood, the local teenager saw me wrenching on my bicycles and befriended me to gain access to my dad's plethora of hand tools. My dad's borrowed tools got me into a whole new world of cars, the 80s muscle car rebirth. There were Mustang GTs, the Mercury Capri RS, the Chevrolet Camaro IROC Z, or for my American friends, the IROC Z, the Chevrolet Monte Carlo SS, the Buick Grand National. My new cool teenager friends told me Lamborghinis were lame and I believed them. When my friends and I became old enough to drive, we bought Fords, Chevrolets, Dodges, and my friends and I took turns owning and beating the crap out of this poor Lincoln Mark 7. I became an American car guy and landed a dream job at a speed shop. That's my Mustang out front. I spent a good part of my earnings putting the entire 2000 Edelbrock catalog under the hood. While at the speed shop, I sold carburetors, both crane and comp lumpy camshafts, and lots of Krager SS wheels. In the summer of 2001, a movie called Fast and the Furious came out and all that changed. We sold 20 nitrous kits that summer. And a staggering number of Wings West body kits. Being heavily influenced by the movie and the direction that my work was going, my world now centered around Japanese tuner cars. My poor Mustang was broken and collecting dust. Eventually, I decided to swap in an SR20. Perhaps I watched Tokyo Drift a few too many times. While import drag racing my V6 swapped Mazda 323, one of my competitors blew an engine and oiled down the entire drag strip. These spills take hours to clean up, so I wandered over to the road course to see what they were up to. While spectating at the road course, I saw Lotuses and Porsches and BMWs duking it out. I was introduced to a whole new different world of cars and a whole different kind of driving excitement. I got the road race bug. This prompted me to buy a Lotus 7 replica, having a newfound appreciation for driving fast around corners and not just in a straight line. I took some advanced driver training courses and realized that race car drivers are nuts. Soon after advanced driver training, I discovered car cruises, but they weren't the type of car cruises that I was used to. I was used to going to the A&W and just hanging out with my friends and talking cars. These newfound cruises were much more exciting and took place on the twisty back roads. Once in a while we'd even eclipse the speed limit, but that was only when we were in Mexico. 
With my newfound focus being road cars rather than stripped out race cars, I started thinking about exotic cars. Then I started thinking about $10,000 exotic cars. You know, the kind of exotic cars that my friends and I could actually afford to buy. Exotic cars and supercars costing around $10,000 are generally from the 1980s and the 1990s, which in my twisted mind offer the most driving enjoyment. 80s and 90s cars had few if any driver's aids. They weighed half as much as modern cars that are filled with blue teeth, screens, and 27 plus airbags. The first $10,000 supercar that I'm going to investigate is the Porsche 928. Before this video, I had a very vague idea of what a Porsche 928 was. This look at the 928 is not like the rest. It's not about what the 928 was supposed to be, but rather what it is now. It was at its peak an $83,000 new car, but now for reasons it is a sub $10,000 used car, so mere mortals like myself can afford to buy one. So what exactly is a Porsche 928 anyway? The short answer is that it is a very uniquely styled German muscle car that handles like a Porsche. Please excuse me if I pronounce this wrong. The styling was the work of Antol that went by Tony Lapine. What's his face? I can't pronounce that. Designed an all aluminum overhead cam V8 with a transaxle with nearly 50 50 weight distribution. The transaxle was available in 5 speed manual, 3 speed automatic, and later on 4 speed automatic. So, what you say? A Mazda Miata has 50 50 weight distribution too? The Miata does not have 345 horsepower and 369 pound feet of torque, like the Porsche 928 does. The Porsche 928 debuted at the 1977 Geneva Motor Show and became the first sports car to win European Car of the Year. Here they show the overhead cam all aluminum V8. The Porsche 928 production occurred in Stuttgart, Germany. Here is a shot of them rolling down the assembly line. Hey Klaus, building the 928 is thirsty work. Then can we stop for a pint? Every eight workstations. One of the most unique Porsche 928 styling features was the Lamborghini Miura style pop up headlamps. Porsche 928 interiors came in many different choices of fabric and colors, but the Pasha option, probably pronounced that wrong, was clearly the coolest. After all, nothing says race car like a checkered flag interior. The Porsche 928 got more powerful as time went on. The original engine was an all aluminum overhead cam 4.5 liter V8 with 219 horsepower. In 1983, the 928S got a displacement boost to 4.7 liters, making 234 horsepower. The 1985 928 got another boost in displacement and was now rolling with a 5.0 with four valves per cylinder and produced 288 horsepower. The 928S4 arrived in the second half of 1986 as a 1987 model. An updated version of the 5 liter V8 made 316 horsepower. 1989 brought a 326 horsepower 5 liter for the GT. In the spring of 1992, the displacement was increased to 5.4 liters for the 928 GTS model. This engine made 345 horsepower. That thing got a hammy? Yeah. Sweet. In 1990, Porsche introduced the computer controlled 0 to 100% PSD locking differential. The unit works similar to the system used in the legendary Porsche 959. Focus groups love the Porsche 928. If I had a Porsche 928, I would take it off a sick jump and all the women, they would love me. I'm not sure about that, Pierre. You could walk into our whore house with $10,000. I'm pretty sure you still wouldn't get laid. Hee <laughs> hee, got that right. Porsche 928 marketing was pure In gold. just nine seconds, the new Porsche 928 S4 can go from zero to 60. And back to zero. What is that, sir? That, Charles, is my new Porsche 928 S4. Shall I have the chauffeur put it in the garage? Fire the chauffeur. Despite the clever marketing, only a total of 61,056 Porsche 928s left dealer showrooms between 1978 and 1995. 
poor old Ernest got canned in 1980, partly because of the lackluster 928 sales. On the road, the Porsche 928s were praised for their effortless high-speed cruising and comfort. Wait a minute, what the heck was that? Holy crap, it's a jackalope. They do exist. Run. The transmission in a Porsche 928 was either a 5-speed dogleg manual transmission or a 3-speed automatic transmission borrowed from the fun boys at Mercedes-Benz. The automatic was upgraded to a 4-speed in 1983. Guesstimates suggest that only 15 to 20 percent of all Porsche 928s have a standard transmission. Early 928s came standard with a 3-speed automatic transmission and it was a no-cost option to have the 5-speed manual. Porsche 928s have a healthy amount of aftermarket support. Building big power is reasonably easy. The stock transmissions can handle upwards of 800 horsepower. The 928's engine is pretty robust. From my research, the only thing to really look out for is to ensure the timing belt and the water pump get changed every 60,000 miles. Man, that can only be described as a train length. That poor Mustang got taken to Gapplebee's. At the drag strip, the Porsche 928 put down respectable quarter mile times and was pretty comparable to its rivals in the quarter mile. I came across some old best motoring shows and it showed the 928 duking it out against some other sports cars on the road course and I was amazed at how well it did because the Porsche 928 was kind of a luxury GT and they were putting it up against pure sports cars. It really held its own. It was pretty impressive. Buying a Porsche 928. Late 70s, early 80s 928s go for between $4,000 and $12,000. Mid 80s to late 80s 928s go between $9,000 to $21,000. 1990s 928s go for between $25,000 and $65,000. The experts seem to have a reoccurring theme that was to buy the best example that you could afford as fixing up a junker is more expensive than buying a well-preserved example in the long run. The other thing the experts seem to agree on is now is the time to get your 140 to 170 mile per hour supercar before they become unobtainable. Like the 911. Thanks for watching the first episode of Jason Bowman Loves Cars. I hope you enjoyed it. Please remember to like and subscribe and ring the little bell so you get notified when my next video comes out. Thanks.